here we are. Uh, let's jump in. So the sector generator is uh, something I really wanted to work on uh, later on in the development. The reason being, the original sector generator, the random sector generator, was actually uh, a sort of composite of um, there was there was possibilities. There were like maybe three events that would give you diff three different kinds of asteroids, and then three events that would give you three different kinds of nebulas, and they were layered on top like you were making a cartoon or something. Yeah, and that's not true random. It's not procedural, really. Um, and so I wanted to make something that was a bit more intelligent uh, about like generating a sector. And so you can see this massive wash of uh, variables down there, and there's actually one clipped off the bottom, which is number uh, sector ship number. Um, but that's okay. You'll, uh, in fact, this should be the other way around because sector station number, the stations aren't actually implemented in it yet. They will be, but they're not. So uh, the way this works is uh, very simple. Right now in the environment menu, uh, aside from all the other stuff which can allow you to create a sector, uh, so actually I'll go over them very quickly, we have asteroids which is like a big paintbrush, you just sort of hold one down and then you can right click around and create a big bunch of asteroids. And uh, the asteroid generating uh, uh, event is quite intelligent. Uh, this clipping problem with asteroids is a lot more severe more, uh, more often than not. Um, if you tell the asteroid event to, to generate a giant asteroid field, uh, say 50,000 by 50,000, and you want it there, uh, sorry, 50, a 50,000 uh, radius, sorry, what was I talking about? Yeah, a 50,000 radius from here, that would clip into the wall. And so what it does is it scales that a little bit uh, so that it doesn't clip into the wall quite so hard, like this. Um, we also have uh, nebulas. Nebulas don't need the same treatment because, uh, that was two on that uh, menu by the way, uh, nebulas don't need the same treatment because they uh, they can exist out with the lines and you can make them nice and thick or you can just have one little dab, that kind of thing. Um, so that's the nebula spawner. Uh, the same can be done with mines. The mine one is quite interesting. If you want to make a minefield or a block of minefields you can do something like this. Um, there we go, line of mines, and then like do the same again, so uh, open that up, start, and there we go. You can make yourself a little box if you want, or you can have it right across uh, right across the space. And the way that works is mine, you can see it says there, mark beginning of minefield. So you right click somewhere, press 3, and it says mark end of minefield. I want it way up there. Boom. Massive line of mines will spawn. Um, and then you've got, uh, also the eraser can work in this way, so I'll skip over the anomalies just now. Six is the eraser, and uh, what it does is it allows you, in the same way as painting, to erase, like this, yeah? So you can shape what you have crafted. Uh, so you can make a trade line, like this, straight through the mines, like that, yeah? Quite useful stuff, and uh, kind of nice if you want to add a little bit of flavor to some sectors that have generated or you've already defined. Um, so let's go back to the, the random generator. So the random sector generator, all that's happening with a random sector generator is it is setting the um, is setting the variable for generating a sector to zero, which is no nothing defined, there's nothing predefined before either. Uh, it just randomizes absolutely every aspect and all those aspects are in the big list I can't show you because the mouse doesn't go over it in this testing space here. Uh, all the variables that you see on your left, apart from the clock variables and the other two above it, they are, they are all to do with this sector generator. So when I push 7 now uh, to generate a random sector, you'll see them all do things. A lot of them do things. Here we go. Boom. Lots of numbers. Lots of things happening. Things are generating. And we can see a nice sort of uh, strange brush of nebulas or nebulae rather uh, and the asteroids are coming in there so this is a mixed sector um, it's got quite a, a heavy heavy content of asteroids and and uh, the nebulae and once again these asteroids are uh, not all on the same plane although it appears from from there because there's only a few of us in, uh, a few of them in front of us um, they are actually on different planes so chuck us in a bit more of a thick part of the asteroid field. Boom. There we go. So we have um, a, a nice 
spread of asteroids, which are a little bit more of a challenge for helmsmen to negotiate, which is kind of the point. And also these asteroids, these are modern asteroids. Um, you can obviously just do this with regular asteroids. I just like the look of these asteroids. Um, so the mod is not required is what I'm trying to say. And you can see that the numbers there are still still going. Things are still being generated. The most intensive part of this, the, the thing that takes such a long time, is actually the ships being generated. Um, so you can see that um, once the entire sector had generated itself, unfortunately I was messing around with us in, a net, uh, in the asteroid fields, but uh, once the sector is generated, if the, the sector has a trade lane, as you can see at the bottom there it says sector has trade lane 1, then it'll generate that trade lane. And uh, the generating of the trade lane is actually different based on um, the sector infrastructure. Uh, sorry, sector activity level there. Oh no, it is infrastructure. So if sector infrastructure, which is kind of right in the middle of that entire block, sector infrastructure is one, then there's very little infrastructure and it has literally no chance of having a trade lane. If sector infrastructure is two, low infrastructure, but infrastructure nonetheless, then the, the idea um, is that the trade lane will be less advanced. There won't be these beacons. You can see these little dots on the map, hopefully, which are like small and gray. Um, they represent trade, trade lane beacons essentially, so that a ship that was going through the sector would know where to go and not stray off the path. Um, this infrastructure level is level three. Oh, I see what the problem is now. There we go. Bye. Um, level three, and um, at level three, the trade lanes have these beacons. So level two, no beacons. Level three beacons and also uh, higher the level of infrastructure the thicker the trade lane you notice this is quite a broad trade lane and uh, they do get narrower um, so we have a sector which has got you know a lot of stuff but clearly someone had to plow through here uh, with with some collectors and uh, some guys that break down asteroids the miners I suppose uh, to to get uh, to get a trade lane through and these guys are not using it the only reason these guys are not using it is because I haven't built in the functionality for them to like spawn in, in the right direction yet uh, but it'll be there so this, the ships that have spawned in here going about their own thing mostly uh, USN vessels oh hello got a wee message awesome. so uh, USN vessels this is clearly a USN sector um, so that's one like that, that's that's uh, the, the random sector generator if we build another one so we go to E um, you can actually hold it if you want to as well. Uh, I've built in this functionality where you can hold it and for a certain amount of time it'll just pop up hold time and that scales the density of the sector or the potential density of the sector. So you can see already we have a giant trade lane coming through the middle there and uh, a, a small dot of, uh, <laughs> of nebula. So um, not a very, not a very like, uh, dense sector at all. Let's do the same again leave it at two. This time it'll probably be a little bit different. That time it was a lot more focused. I can see a trade lane coming in because it's kind of deleting nebula about there. Okay. And so if we look at this side there again, uh, you can see has nebula quite close to the bottom. There's one. Has asteroids? None. Um, and so the nebula number is 153 and that's, that's spread out all over the place with different nebula events and they're completely random they you know they randomize themselves all throughout the sector and some of them I, I find the nebulas make a very nice natural pattern uh, you can see the kind of the density build up and fade is it's just it's nice to look at um, the asteroids not so much but that's just because of how the asteroids spawn um, in the game and so we still have some ships coming in. Again, I think I mentioned, oh, um, if you haven't watched the previous video, this is running a lot slower because I'm recording, but you know, um, if you have a if you have a, a server that is dedicated to this, it should run a lot faster. Uh, I know that the server that we run on definitely runs this a lot better than my PC, um, but it still gets there. Okay, let's do one more random sector so you can watch the numbers again on the left. So from top to bottom, sector ships there. Um, the 1142, uh, that's the kind of, so we've got nothing but ships in this sector. You can see no nebulas, no asteroids, no nebulae rather, no asteroids. We've got one anomaly, which is right there, and now it's just spawning ships. So, sector ships, 1142. So 11, 
Um, in in this one, I think I, I can't remember exactly what that code stands for. So let's find out. Uh, generates nib. Well, where is it? It's generate sector ships. There we go. So generate sector ships. Continue. Ha. Oh right. So the ah yes, the the one of that eleven. Uh, is just a cap, if you like. Um, the parser that I've mentioned before uh, is not the best parser. It's not intelligent enough to differentiate between a zero and uh, no input because they are all sort of defaulted to zero. And having them defaulted to negative numbers kind of causes other problems. So, um, yeah, so the, the 11 that was there, the, the first one, this, this one here, was just a cap. Uh, the zero, uh, sorry, the, the next one was a faction. So these are all aura ships because the aura faction is one. Uh, so yeah, what what it does is it takes uh, the random faction, uh, the random uh, sector activity level and the security level, and compounds them into a um, into one number. You can do this outside of that. You could you could very easily, if you wanted to, just take a, a set variable. Uh, set activity level and then uh, make it the, the sector activity level and uh, then set the sector uh, sorry set the sector ships away uh, doing what is essentially a random the same way I have explained with the planets and things you, you can you can define everything outside of that line if you want but it's just a way for like one line of code to potentially give you what you need um, anyway continuing on. So we have a bunch of ships which got spawned in that one, and one of them is a shuttle. But I've I've mentioned before that for some reason the shuttle isn't spawning in, and I know why it is. Ah, all right, cool. Let's do that again. Let's uh, this this time this time we'll go for a manual sector. So I've, I've shown you you can randomize sectors. Uh, you can hold it to give you a better density or a different density rather. Uh, let's go for a manual sector. Now, as you can see, it clears it straight away. Input sector code. Now, sector codes 1 to 4 for the type. 1 is clear. 1 is like no uh, no asteroids, no nebulas, no nothing really. Um, fa uh, the Sorry, 1 is clear. 2 is a nebulous sector. 3 is asteroids. 4 is both. So let's do a nebulous sector. Let's press 2. And then the other 2, they've got stars next to them. They are completely optional. Uh, so I'm going to have to do that again, so <laughs> I'm speaking over most of it, and it went away. Uh, oh, I've pressed random sector. My bad. Oh, apparently, I, I didn't. I didn't press it. Oh, Christ. No, I've broken it, haven't I? I've broken it. I have. I've, I've, went, and, I've went and broken it. Let's see that. So, um, for uh, the faction, let's, let's make it... Uh, Let's make it a raider faction, so 8, and infrastructure, uh, 3. Hopefully we get a trade line here. <laughs> so we have a trade lane coming in, as you can see on the left there, there is actually has trade lane exists. And the trade lane, because it deletes things to make the trade lane, it waits till everything has been spawned in. And then the trade lane goes wow, right across there. Um, and the trade lanes, uh, they kind of randomize where they are on the sides. Uh, they make sure that they go to at least two sides of the of the map. Um, cool. So not so many ships, just one raider cargo ship coming through, and he decides to go through the nebulas once again. Um, cool. And again, with the manual spawner, with the with the manual spawner, if you want to set a density, uh, I haven't actually put it in the prompt there, which I'll have to do. But if you want to set a density, I'll, I'll just do like a, a nebulous sector this time. Nebulous sector, uh, faction of raiders once again, infrastructure of two, and then you hold space, and it comes up with a hold time. So that can help you set a density you're looking for, rather than just being completely random. And this time rounds, it's not spawned many at all. Um, as you can see, the the nebula number is 35, um, and that's quite odd, actually. Why is that? Hmm. I think that's broken a little bit. Maybe it's not implemented correctly. That should scale slightly differently. Oh no! Wait, the nebula number goes from 10 upwards, and with uh, 
with the hold time it scales the maximum and minimum by the density number you set. So the density number can go from 1 to 5 or if it's 0 it randomizes it and I went to 2 there so it would mean that the minimum was 20 so that's technically fine. I maybe need to change that because that's not how I expected it to come out. Anyway, not such a dense sector. Let's do that again. Let's do both. Uh, make it, uh, I don't know what 6 is, I think it's Arvonian. And leave the infrastructure and just press space. And hold it for 4. So now you can see the nebula number 203, asteroid number, wow, through the roof. And we have Arvonians? Yeah, Arvonians. They're going to kill me if I don't change my side to them, so there we go. Again, I'll get through the I'll get through the menus. I'll do like an entire thing on just the menu functionality. There we go. Look at that. So I left the infrastructure to be completely random, and it randomized to three. Isn't that cool? So that's the that's the effect of the sector generator. You have random sectors. You have manual sectors if you really want to put in a code. Now let's take a look at it. So we were uh, in the sector generator here. Let's have a look. All the way up to the top. There we go. I started putting some notes here uh, and I was amazed to find out they didn't crash when I put them in this form. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll make them a bit more comprehensive in the cheat sheet, which I have here. Um, and I have, I'm sure, put some notes in for the planets and the ship generator. I'll do it for the sector generator as well. Anyway, here we go. Sector generator. If it's not negative one, so pretty much like any any value at all, and the reason I've put it to that is because it's a code that goes into this. Um, then it parses the code, and so say I put um, one thousand and uh, one thousand and thirty one in. Um, if I was to put one thousand thirty one in, uh, code position three would be greater than zero, um, and it would take code position three and set it as the type. So. 1000. Oh wait, what am I talking about? Doi, this, this is not the one with the cap on it. So say I put a three digit number in. Say I put in uh, 340, uh, 343. Don't know why that popped into my head, but now it's making me think of Halo. Put in 343, um, it would realize I'm not generating a sector. It would check that I'm not already, that the code is not already ready. That means that the parser is, uh, is not already being used. And then it would take the parse code. So this is that code parser I was telling you about. Um, it's going to take that 343 and chuck it into the code parser. The code parser. Um, let's go and find this. So the code parser has a bunch of variables which might be useful actually. Has um, like a couple of stepping variables to make sure that the flow is okay and then uh, a bunch of storage for values. Um, so parse code, that's planet spawn. It's here somewhere, I'm telling you. See, I use it for quite a lot of things because it's very useful to make sure you have a nice flexibility. And I've already been here. Oh, I'm doing it up the way, that's why. Cool, there it is. So, parameter parser. So if parse code is greater than zero, because you're not going to parse a zero, there's no point, um, then parsing code, uh, and you're not already parsing code, then, and, and the code is not ready already, as in this hasn't been used and is waiting to be reset, then we are parsing code. Awesome. Um, so parsing code, as long as that equals one, and the code basic, uh, like the basic checks have not been done then these are the basic checks. It takes up to a seven digit number um, and essentially just takes uh, the parse code that you put in, so 343, and divides it by all of these numbers. Say, say I actually have a seven digit number. Say I have 12, like I have, what's, what would this be? That'd be 1 million, 1 million 200,000. Say I have that. Code position seven be one, Code position 6 would be 12 at this point, so it's greater than 90, but less than 100. No, it's not greater than 90. What are we talking about? It's not. Fuck. I'm going nuts, man. I've, I've just been talking too much today. 
So, um, it's 12. So it's still, yeah, it's greater than that, but less than 20. There we go. Greater than 10, but less than 20. Then I'll remove 10. So it becomes 2. And then finally, it is less than 10, greater than or equal to 0. So we actually have a value here. So we take 12, we remove that 10, it becomes 2. The same is true for 5 here, except it starts in the uh, hundreds, starts in the hundreds. And then when we get to composition 4, it starts in the thousands. Um, and then when we get to composition 5, it starts in the tens of thousands to make sure that the increments are fast and it can parse the code nice and fast. This is probably not the most elegant way of doing it, but it is unfortunately the, the most elegant way I could think of doing it given the limitations of uh, the parser. The XML parser, that is. Um, so this, this is what parses the code and it brings it down and breaks those, um, breaks those values into single digits. Once that is done and the code is ready at the end of the uh, parser, having done its work, then code position three would be three at this point. Sector type would be set to three. Faction type would be set to four. Infrastructure type would be set to three because it was three, four, three. Okay, um, and there's also a few others in here for if you're omitting certain values. So uh, if you omit, if you've only put in a two digit number, like you've put in 34 because you want to leave the infrastructure to fend for itself, then um, you're checking to see if it's a three, di a three digit or a two digit, not, ah, three digit or two digit number uh, at this point. And then if it's a two digit number, then digit number, Jesus. Uh, then your sector type would equal the position of two, and your faction would equal the position of one, and then sectors like the sector infrastructure would equal nothing at this point because it's going to be random. And then the same is true here. If you are looking at, um, oh, that could totally do with a bit of uh, extra code here. Two seconds. I need to make a, an adjustment. I needs to needs to check whether code position three is zero. <laughs> All right. So if code position three is zero and code position two is zero and code position one is not zero, then we are taking it that you have inputted only one number and it is gonna be assigned to the sector type. So that's why the faction and infrastructure are um, optional things that you can put in. And if none of them exist, if, if everything is zero, then you have put in zero because the parser can accept nothing. You have put in zero and everything is completely random nothing's been defined. So now we go into the definition step. So regardless of whether you defined anything up here or not, we go into the definition step. So if the type was defined, then it skips past this because sector type is not equal to zero. If it's not defined, then it goes through this and sets the sector type to either one or like between one, two, three, or between one and four, one, two, three, or four. And there's a little bit of a hint there. Density uh, doesn't get set in that little bit of code, but if you've set it beforehand, like before you've triggered the sector generator, then it would uh, skip past this because it wouldn't be zero, else it'll just, you know, randomize it. Uh, same with the faction, set that's done in the code here. And the infrastructure. Now, the security level I left uh, to be done out with for some reason. I might, I might yet put that into the parse, uh, the code line here. Um, but as for now, it's, it's out with the uh, out with the code. You would normally do it beforehand. And then, based on the sector security level and the sector infrastructure, we get the sector activity level. So you just add them together. So if we have uh, a lot of security but very little infrastructure, so let's say we've got an infrastructure level of one and a security level of three, we have an activity level of four. If we have high infrastructure and high security, then we have, so that's three and three, then we have an activity level of six. And what this is meant to do is that activity level is then the parameter uh, that's used to define um, whether we have anomalies. So for instance here, if we have anomalies, uh, we're checking, sorry, we're checking to see if we get anomalies. If a sector anomaly, uh, anomaly number is negative one, uh, as in it's not been set, and the activity level is greater than zero, as in it has been set, um, then the anomaly max number equals eight minus the activity level. So the greater the activity level, the less likely you are to get anomalies, which is exactly what you'd expect. If there's more people in the, more people in the sector, they would be like, oh, there's an anomaly, I'm gonna go grab that. Uh, whereas if you have um, the if you have activity that is like rim space kind of thing, if you have one and one, no security hardly and uh, hardly any infrastructure, then it's going to be eight minus two, 
divided by two at this point. So it would be one. So the random, uh, wait a minute, what am I talking about? Eight minus two is six divided by two is three. So you've got a potential of three anomalies there. Whereas uh, with with the other one, with um, with six, you have the potential for, six is your activity level, you have the potential for one anomaly. So it turns from a 50-50 chance uh, into a, uh, oh, Man, I'm not very good at percentage, just straight off my head. And I realized that wasn't a percentage I just gave you. <laughs> um, a 75% chance of at least having one anomaly, I believe. I know a uh, percentage is compound and I'm, I'm not terribly great at them. Anyway, anomalies. That's, uh, that's one example of how the activity level plays into this. Uh, it'll also play into the number of ships there are. So the higher the, the higher the activity level, the more likely ships are to to arrive. So say um, say you have tons of stations but no security, you're not going to get so many ships in there as you would with high security because people are going to be like, ah, this is the sector where I might get blown up. Or if you have lots of security but no uh, no infrastructure, no stations and things, then people are not going to be there so much because they're like, there's nothing to be here for, you know. If you have high both, if you have high security and high infrastructure, then this is a trade hub. This is the kind of place where people are going to be, so there's going to be loads of ships. So yeah, the, the higher the activity level, the more likely you are to have ships there. Um, and then continuing on down, it just checks to see whether the activity level has been set before we move on. So that's, you know, the activity level is used to, to define quite a number of things. But back to where it was actually set. The infrastructure and security level define the activity level. There we go. Um, copy and pasting, I've got you know into the habit unfortunately where I've, I just don't reset these names sometimes. So now we set the conflict, um, now it's not quite implemented yet but uh, what it does is it takes the infrastructure level and security level and scales the chance of conflict based on that. So I'm, I'm not very good like I said at small like arithmetic like this in my head um, but the higher the infrastructure and the lower the security, the more likely we are to get um, conflict because obviously a more populated sector uh, is going to be more of a target for for people uh, and especially if it has lower security. So if we try and go through this, um, infrastructure level, say infrastructure is low and security is high. So say one, three, yeah, one third times a hundred to get me a percentage. Uh, so a third as a percentage is 33. Um, and then divide that by three is 11, yeah? So low infrastructure, high security, we have 11% as the, as the uh, conflict chance. And then we take that conflict chance down here, so we've got conflict chance being set. Sector conflict is not though, so random percentage. If the random percentage is zero, uh, if the random percentage is, uh, is 11 or less, I think, Oh, I think this is backwards. Oh no! <laughs> so, random percentage here. Um, what it really should be is that the the eleven percent uh, conflict chance. If this random percentage is less than the eleven percent, then we have conflict, and so we have a low chance of getting conflict. So I absolutely need to rework this. Let's fucking do that right now. But um, yeah, based on what I just said there, if you had a high uh, infrastructure level, um, oh Jesus this to um, compare the random percentage with the conflict chance. Alright, if you had um, a high if you had a high conflict chance, uh, so if you have a high infrastructure but low security, that'd be 3 over 1. Uh, times 100, which is 300, and then divided by 3, which is 100. So you had a 100% chance of conflict of some kind in that sector. Um, and if you don't want it like that, you can obviously change the maths, but um, it seems to make sense to me. It makes sense that in a, a sector with high security, there's a reason for the high, uh, sorry, low security and uh, high infrastructure, there's going to be trouble, you know? If you want to, if you don't want it to be a problem, then put high security there. So if you have three divided by three, that equals one. So say we have high infrastructure and high security. That's one 
times 100 is 100. Divided by 3 is 33, so you have a 33% chance of, um, of it being a conflict zone, that kind of thing. Uh, and so in that case it would be a lot of infrastructure. It's a target, but security is there because there's sometimes a bit of conflict here. So that's the conflict level. Um, okay, for the environment ones here. So we got has nebulas. Um, so every single one of these is in the generating sector uh, section of two, uh, and it just it waits. Obviously, gathers them all and then moves on. So sector type. The sector type is greater than zero, as in it's set, but it's not one, which is blank, and three, which is asteroids. Um, then has nebula if it's not set and the number of nebulae isn't set, then sector has nebula is one. Because it means it's either two or four. Yeah, it's not one or three, it's two or four. Two is the nebulas, four is mixed. So it's definitely gonna have both. Um, and then if it is two or, f if it's not two or four, then it's either blank or asteroids and has no nebulas. Nice and simple. And if it has nebulas, then we need to set the nebula number. And the nebula number is based uh, on uh, a minimum of 10 times the sector density and a maximum of uh, 100 times the sector density. And if you remember rightly, sector density was set way up here as 1 to 5 if you don't already define it. And the definition for sector density can be set by holding the key um, when, when using the random or, or manual functions. So uh, continuing on, exactly the same for asteroids, it's set to scale a slight difference of 60 to 600 as a maximum. Uh, times the uh, sector density. So that's a total of 3,000 asteroids as a potential if you are at the highest density, which is fine. Um, anomalies. Uh, anomaly level, we've, we've already gone over that. Trade lanes, here we go. So infrastructure on the trade lane, uh, if, uh, if it's greater than one, if the infrastructure is greater than one, uh, because at zero then there would be no infrastructure and no real like body of people to make a trade lane um, then it's a random if it's greater than one whether it has a trade lane or not if the sector infrastructure is one then the sector doesn't have a trade lane straight up uh, continuing on so if the sector has a trade lane we get the trade lane orientation one of six orientations so these orientations are one from top to bottom two from top to left you can see, yeah, top to left, three from bottom to left, four from bottom to right, five from top to right, and six from right to left. So that just, you know, obviously covers all the all the aspects of where you might want to get a trade lane, all the way around, and then straight across the middle. And then here we are, uh, if the trade lane orientation is top to bottom, then we set the trade lane uh, randoms with the, uh, with the extremities in mind, yeah? and random random one the reason we have random randoms is because um the random or the randomizer is not uh it's not very random and if you if you like make a random number that goes and feeds into another random number generator then it makes it a little bit more random um if you're not sure what i mean by that uh, i would encourage you to create a random number of the same threshold so create like a random of one to ten uh, hundreds of times and see what your results are. You'll find that they'll be biased in one way. And I, I, kn I don't quite know how to explain why that is. I have heard why it is and I, I think I've got a grasp on why it is. Uh, so it's essentially, uh, if it's three, then it'd be 30,000 to 40,000, or 40,000 to 50,000, or 50,000 to 60,000, or 60,000 to 70,000. So that's exactly what I'm looking for. And the same is true of this one here, it's that random two is just random two because random one and random two, I wanted them to be separate. Um, and then the same stuff is used for if it goes from like uh, top to bottom or top to left, just, you know, you change which one has got the static 10 and 100,000. Um, and so it ends up generating this trade lane which goes from at least one side to one other side. And so we have trade lanes Put in. Now for stations, stations are not done yet, but they are calculated. So, if the infrastructure level is greater than zero, then uh, the station number max is infrastructure times infrastructure. So, if it's one, then it's one. If it's two, then it's four. If it's uh, three, then it's nine. Yeah. And so that that random then goes from zero to potential of nine. And if it's a high infrastructure sector, then you get you could get nine. Uh, no, I should really change that, but you could get nine um, 
stations, or you could get zero. It should really be scaled, I think. High infrastructure should at least have one. Uh, so it might be one to something else. Um, hmm. I'll have to look into that. Ships! Activity level again, here we are. We've already gone over that. Um, but sector ship maximum, yeah, if, if you've got if you've got higher activity level because it's secure and lots of infrastructure, then you're going to have uh, ships equal to the activity level times four as a potential. So a potential of 24 ships. Uh, and it goes from zero to 24 to spawning those ships. And then here is where it's like, I, I've done this for just about every single, um, every single thing I've made. Um, as long as there are lots of lots of like attributes to be defined, whether they be random or otherwise, um, the last thing that's listening, uh, the last thing that's listening before it goes into a, like a different state from two to three, uh, is listening for the type, the density, the faction, the infrastructure, the security level, the activity level, and the conflict to all be set. Once they are all set, uh, and obviously we're checking it has asteroids and stuff um, we're checking these have all been set we're checking the stations and ships have all been set then we reset the code parser because there's no need for all that information anymore and uh, we set the generating sector to three so we go to the next step everything has been set we move to the next step creating the sector so uh, we take the generate asteroid fields function which is uh, a function which uh, layers the asteroid fields on top of one another um, it takes the sector asteroid number so say it's a hundred and uh, this the asteroid layers right now are 10 so there are 10 layers which are generated for any number um, and so it takes the maximum number of asteroids divides them by the layers and then randomizes what what, what the y coordinate is for the layers and generates asteroids so if it was 100 then you would have layers of 10 asteroids by 10 and they would all be spread out giving you that kind of uh have they got any asteroids there we go um giving you that hello everybody's come to me isn't that nice <laughs> um giving you this kind of layering like that or rather i see them in better light a nice spread. Um, so that's what generate asteroid fields, generate nebulae does. Uh, it also, sorry, generate asteroid field. Um, it also is responsible for like uh, splitting up the asteroids into separate fields. So it just it doesn't just generate one. That's actually a different function I've just described. What this does <coughs> is it splits up the asteroids. Um, into a random number of asteroid fields and then you know puts them throughout the sector so um, oh Christ there we go back to the master screen so you can see that there is like one asteroid event here one asteroid event here one here one here and there's a kind of one in the middle as well so five separate events for all of the asteroids that's the function that's responsible for splitting them up after it gets into here it then calls the create asteroid field uh, create asteroids function uh, which does what I just described which is the, the layering generate nebula again same sort of idea you give it a maximum number and it splits it up into separate nebulas um, the anomalies similar sort of idea the ships uh, similar sort of idea again this is the one with a cap on it because the ship faction sorry the sector faction can equal zero and the parser doesn't recognize zero uh, if it's at the end of the uh, code so once all this is done we are setting all of these other functions off generating the sector goes to four and then if the asteroid field is um, on and the nebula uh, if, if, sorry, if the asteroid field has been generated and the nebulae have been generated then uh, and we've also generated the trade lane then we are going to like number five at which point oh shit I see what that is okay so we come down here and uh, so I mentioned earlier on that when trade lanes are being spawned, they uh, they wait for everything else to finish in the in the space. Not ships uh, or stations or anything, but they wait for the environment to finish. So uh, if generate asteroid field and generate nebulae and generate anomalies and sector ships, they all get set off. Uh, once we go to number four here, they get set to four. 
we go to number four, we wait for asteroids and nebulae to be finished, and then we generate a trade line. And then here we wait for the asteroid nebulae, we wait for everything to be finished, um, including the trade line, the ships, and we make sure that no ships are actually spawning. Create fleet and create ships, these are two other functions. Um, or create fleet and create ship, rather, are two other functions that uh, individually create ships or create an entire fleet. And we wait to make sure that they're not spawning anything before we say the sector has been created, at which point all of these things are set back to zero and the generate sector reset is happening. And then when that happens, all of the attributes for the sector uh, get set back to their defaults so that another sector can then be generated afterwards. And uh, this is the asteroids uh, generator. I'm not going to go into that just yet because, well, uh, probably at all uh, because I've been talking for a long time and this is bound to get very boring after a while. But needless to say, this is what I described earlier on. Splits up the asteroid number and uh, puts it into layers. Uh, same with the nebula, uh, nebulae, and same with the, ast uh, the anomalies. And there's the trade line function for generating the trade line. The way the trade line is generated, uh, it takes the trade line X start and the trade line Z start and uh, well, you know, the trade line start and the trade, the trade line end and it calls the eraser. Uh, I showed you the eraser, the eraser earlier on in the um, generator, uh, sorry, in the environment menu. Um, this eraser, you just sort of plug in coordinates for the start and end and then tell it to go, so spawn line eraser. Um, and it'll spawn the line eraser uh, between those two points and delete an entire line. And uh, random train la trade lane with the sector infrastructure times two and a half thousand. So if you have more infrastructure, you're more likely to get a thicker trade lane. Um, so it can be between two and a half thousand and three thousand, or it can be between uh, seven and a half thousand and twelve thousand. Hmm? No, seven and a half thousand and nine thousand, that would be. Um, so yeah, the thicker the trade lane, uh, the, the, the higher the infrastructure, which makes sense. And then we get the difference, calculate the, uh, the difference and uh, use them here to store the trade lane. Uh, I can't remember what, what these are for actually. Oh yeah! Beacons. We we get the difference and uh, the quarters of like the quarters between the differences, and then that enables us to, to dot these beacons down. So these are the positions: uh, position X for trade lane beacon one, and position Z for trade lane beacon two. And then we create these. Uh, so they are the beacons. And uh, trade lane reset. Oh yeah, of course, another reset to make sure that it can be used again. Ship generator. That has um, that has its own little code parse, you know, its, its own little uh, code block here, where if you put in the full code, it takes all of what you uh, all of what you put in, sets faction activity level and security level for the ship generator, um, and if you put in nothing, it randomizes it, and then we go through all that. Um, this is all this is all part of the sector generator, so I guess we should go through it a little bit, but it's much the same sort of idea. And uh, now that you've you've seen how the the sector generator works. If if these aren't defined, then it'll define them from zero to eight, which are the factions. It should actually be zero to nine because stricken exists. Um, so that's interesting. Zero to nine. Hmm. So yeah, if, sec if the faction isn't set, then cool, we set it to something. If the activity level isn't set, then we set it to something. If the security level isn't set, then we set it to something also. This presents a situation where the activity level could be 2, but the security level could be 3. That's not so good. Um, but I suppose it's not out of the realm of possibility. Anyway. Uh, then for ships, uh, we obviously set the number of ships, we set the, the, the number of security ships and the number of regular ships. So the reason for this is um, if you are creating fleet types, uh, well if you're in a sector with a number of ships in it and it's got a high security level, some of them are going to be security ships. So you want to take the max and then get a, a certain percentage of them to be security ships. And that is random. So we have a proportion potential 
and then the actual proportion is selected. Um, and then we have the number of regular ships. Everything is set, we check that everything is set, and then we move on to the next stage of generating these ships, at which point we enter a loop. So <clears throat> we get a maximum for one fleet, which is eight ships in this instance. Um, we get security ships left. If it's greater than zero, then it means obviously we need to spawn more security ships. Uh, and we, we, we test how many ships we're about to add. And if, <clears throat> if the test is larger than the number of security ships left, then the ship spawn count is equal to the number left. If it's okay, if it's less than or equal to security ships left, then we, uh, we set the ship count to the test that we just made. And then at this point, we uh, get a random position for the fleet and we use the create fleet function to spawn uh, a count for the ship, so we times it by thousands uh, to create, just I'll, I'll uh, mess around with this just now, so say I wanted to create a fleet that was, um, uh, say I wanted to create a fleet that had 20 ships, so 20, and then the next one here would be three, and that would be for um, the type of type of fleet it is because it's a combat fleet because we're spawning security ships here so combat fleet uh, sector faction so say it was eight and then <coughs> sector faction again goes in because it's actually for the site so you can see now how this the ship spawn count has to be multiplied by a thousand because if I just wanted two ships it would be two thousand um, and that's why that is so you multiply each one of those uh, to, to create this sort of compound code or again you could set them out with rather than doing it in one line of code and then you remove security ships left from the spawn count oh, sorry you remove yeah it's security ships left minus the spawn count gives you how many are actually left and then it goes through the loop again if security ships left is uh, less than one we exit um, and when we get to here we go into regular ships and we do the same sort of thing with the regular ships and then with the regular ships they are like it's one this time rather than three uh, to make sort of regular fleets rather than a mixed fleet or a combat fleet and then we have no regular ships left so we exit we generate uh, we, we reset the generate sector ships and uh, sector ships generated equals one telling that previous event that we have finished generating ships. And the generator obviously just sets everything back to its, its uh, start again. We have the fleet generation code, which takes that uh, parse that you just did, um, but I will get into that with the ship generator. I think I've talked enough for this uh, this section. So we have gone over the, uh, the, the actual sector generator, the function for it, and uh, like the code behind it and you can use it hopefully to great effect to make a nice environment that's random, completely fresh for your players and um, a bit of fun for you to mess around in too. Um, so, we'll see you in the next, or I won't see you, you'll hear me uh, in the next video. Goodbye.